Hello guys, so uh, actually now we reach the, the level in our uh, Vivado HLS course that you can start to do some practical stuff. I choose to do now some uh, image processing algorithms, okay? We are going to follow this book here, Practical Algorithms for Image Analysis. And uh, we're going to start, to start in the chapter 2 that is about calculating histogram and uh, performing uh, contrast adjustment. Uh, probably on this video we're going to, to, to cut it in three phases where first I'm going to teach how to calculate the histogram, how to create uh, an IP core that do the histogram, then the, how, how with the information of the histogram do an algorithm called histogram stretching that is going to, uh, to increase the quality of the contrast. And uh, probably a third one where I'm going to join all these pieces into uh, in, in, into a system in the in the zinc where I'm going to do this automatically. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to switch to the board. And uh, if you guys really like the videos, give me a thumbs up and uh, let's start. So guys, let's talk a little bit about Instagram. Okay. Uh, consider that we have an image. Okay, which is grayscale, which means. Uh, it has values from 0 to 255, okay? And uh, the resolution of these images, for instance, 320 and 240, okay? So, uh, what the histogram is all about? The histogram, imagine the histogram as a plot, okay? Where it has the amount of times that a particular pixel value repeats on the image, okay? So, if you have here uh, this grayscale image, okay? You can have a plot like this. And this basically shows how many times a certain value here, for instance, how many times the zero value appear in the image, okay? And what is, uh, what is important about histograms, okay? Through the histogram, you can extract some, uh, some nice information, for instance, what are the maximum pixels in the, in, in the image, okay? Here is simple to see. If we traverse in the backward direction, okay, in the histogram, you can see that the first pixel, non-zero, will be something like probably 128 and this will be the maximum value of the image and for the minimum as well, going from 0 to this direction here uh, would be like something probably 10 or something like this and what is the relation of the histogram and the contrast of the image, okay? basically, if the histogram is like well concentrated and not well sparsed through all the the, the, the possible values of your image, you're going to have a bad contrast, okay? I'm going to switch on the lab in MATLAB and I show this LENA picture where you can see the, the version where the contrast is really low and uh, we play a little bit with the, uh, with the histogram to, to improve the contrast and then we're going to do an algorithm that does exactly that, it's called the histogram stretch, okay? Uh, let's jump to the lab and uh, we're going to see how we do this in Vivaldo HLS. Hello guys, so here in Vivaldo HLS, let's now create our histogram core. Okay, so uh, let's just call it as a lab 9 HLS histogram. Now we're going to create the the source and the and the test bench. Okay, and uh, basically the histogram we're going to have an input. Oh, sorry, assign it char. Later, by the way, we're also going to change this input stream to the, this in stream to the to the Vivado HLS stream type. Okay, and uh, the output of this is going to be um, is going to be some signals that are going to control a VRAM that is actually going to store our histogram. Okay. Let's call it
Okay, actually, let's do different. Let's create uh, a header file. Okay, and uh, here is the is the include that is going to uh, ha have the definition of the stream data type. Okay, uh, here is the we are going to use the telas to keep the user and the ID side channel from the stream so we actually we are here defining a data type that is going to be uh, unsigned int 8 okay so uh, let's just change here as well on the on our C file because it changed a little bit we're going to include our header file and uh, well, basically the uh, the usage, the calculation of the histogram is quite simple. Uh, we're going to have uh, and control a BRAM. This BRAM is going to be addressed by the the pixel that comes in in our input stream, okay? And uh, for every pre uh, uh, for every pixel value that is addressed, in our case, will be a grayscale image, is going to uh, to increment a value inside the BRAM. So that's wha how we form the histogram. For instance, imagine that the uh, in the stream you have uh, a series of values that are like for instance zero. So imagine that it's coming zero, 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 and then this is going to address this in this uh, this block RAM with the address zero and incremented what we have there. So it's going to actually is going to store the number of times that a certain pixel repeats in the image which by the case is the definition of the histogram okay and why we use the histogram because with the histogram we can uh, we can for instance extract information like the maximum pixel in the image with the medium value of the image the minimum and stuff like this which is uh, which is used when we want to calculate when we want to do the contrast adjustment with the uh, with the histogram stretch algorithm okay so basically uh, let's use this pragmas here to to define to Vivado HLS how to implement them. So uh, the input stream, okay, is going to be uh, an axis stream, okay, HLS interface axis. The the histogram port is going to be at the type interface BRAM, okay. And uh, well, here we are, are we actually doing doing that the return value. Actually, there is no return value for this function, but uh, when we define this, we say that uh, the port return of uh, of our function. This means that the core that is going to be generated from this function here. By the way, let me take this out. The core that is going to be generated from this function will have some axis light control for starting and checking if the, the the algorithm done its calculation and stuff like this. Okay, so basically this is asking to have the start and stop uh, signals available through axis light. Okay. Now uh, one thing that we need to do is that every time that we call the histogram again we need to reset the content of our BRAM if we don't do this all the time that we calculate the histogram again and again actually going to merge the results of the previous image so uh, this part of here of, uh, of the code is basically doing that every time that we call this function we're going to reset the, the histogram to zero so it's going to be ready for the image who who will arrive okay uh now let's just uh, go to the to the algorithm itself it's quite okay i will just copy and paste uh, and I explain to you guys actually this part here is not needed because we're not going to output nothing so basically how the algorithm works for uh it's just just a for loop uh by the way our image will have this dimension here okay will be uh, 320 by 240 okay and actually what we do 
we just read the the content of our string okay for instance imagine that here arrive the value 10 okay and then we are just uh, addressing our BRAM okay don't forget that here uh, we said that histogram will be an interface for BRAM we're just addressing this value okay inside this array histogram and incremented by one okay uh, this pragma here you just instruct Vivado HLS to uh, to minimize the latency by doing a pipeline here in this for loop so what this actually means it's is going to for instance in this case here we are setting the histogram to zero but in a pipeline fashion means that we actually cascading the uh, this 256 operation to decrease the latency okay and it'll be quite simple uh, we're just going to load uh, we are not going to talk about OpenCV now, but Vivado HLS also support OpenCV. But uh, we are going to here use OpenCV just to open the image and uh, and calculate the histogram. Okay. So the test is quite simple. As I mentioned, we are using OpenCV here just to load an image. Okay. Uh, here we just use emread and we pass uh, an image path okay then we populate our stream with the data that we load from our, from our image okay by the way this is quite simple stuff on OpenCV just to access a certain uh, pixel value inside the image uh, later probably I do a tutorial about it okay and then we save the histogram to a file okay in MATLAB uh, it's quite simple to show what exactly we need okay so let me just clean this uh, I did wrong clear all okay so let's just read read this image here okay and uh, if you want to calculate the histogram of the image, we just come and do this. Okay? And uh, basically, we're going to verify if the histogram that we calculated match more or less with this. Okay? So now back to here. We just ask to simulate the C version of this. And uh, I come back in some moments. Okay, so. Uh, it calculated okay let me just open here the the histogram file that we calculated now okay probably is in this directory here actually the file is here in the solution cc view okay and uh, let's open up okay uh, here we can see that uh, in the bin 43 for instance we have nine elements so let's go to MATLAB uh, another way to get the histogram you just click on the variable okay by the way 300, 320 by 240 unit 8 and we can see here if we do a zoom uh, more or less at this point yes we have nine okay so our bean 43 nine yeah this is more or less what uh, maybe you guys are not able to see the the file okay it's more or less what we have okay guys so uh let me close up this so in theory if the c version is working and uh, you are able to synthesize in Vivaldo HLS, you can do a co-simulation to verify again if the, if, the, if the output matches. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, he just said that the solution changed. Okay, so let's create again our, uh, synthesize again our HDL code for this. And uh, after this is done, I run the co-simulation. So, we synthesize, 
now we co simulate let's ask model sim and uh, in this case I'm not interested to see the uh, the waveform at least not now so let's ask to co simulate this and uh, I bring back with the results so guys the simulation is done the co simulation is done and now uh, let's just check the files so I'm just here in the directory of my project okay and I will search for all the text files and we have here two histograms okay one that is the value that we had before in the simulation scene here the C scene okay and uh, now we are interested on the on the histogram that got calculated in the co-simulation okay so uh, let's check so they are basically the same file they have the same content I would say okay so ah, another point before we finish this part let's go back to MATLAB again and let's open the histogram and I will explain okay guys now with the histogram here we have simply uh, an array of 255 elements okay and if you want to answer uh, questions like what are the maximum value of our image okay we can see that is something around 110 and the minimum value is something around 40 okay so instead of doing uh, traversing the image with a for loop just to get the the mean value or in this case the the max value on the image okay we simply uh, run in the histogram we just iterate in the histogram for instance if we iterate from uh, from 255 up to the first element known 0 is going to be our max value and if we go from 0 to our first element known 0 in the direction to 255 it's going to the first known 0 element will be our mean okay I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, now uh, the last step is just to export the this block and uh, in the next video I'm going to show how to do the uh, the image stretching okay sorry the histogram stretching using this IP core as well so I will basically probably uh, I will cut this in three videos or two videos like the second one a little bit bigger but this one I, I choose to be smaller then you guys can uh, can understand better okay so basically we do the histogram quite simple we just uh, for every element on the stream we just uh, increment the value of the pixel in an array of 256 elements by the way 256 just because our grayscale if I have uh, more colors should be like three uh, three arrays one for each uh, color or stuff like this okay so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, let's move to the next videos and see you guys soon